started. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, my name is Wendy Sedler. I am a teacher at Woodrow Wilson. I teach sixth and eighth grade social studies and I am uh, helping to coordinate the coffee chats throughout this year. Um, and if you haven't joined us before, this is just an opportunity for us to start a conversation between the school community and the parents and community members about um, what our focus really is for this school year. And so if you haven't heard the term SEL before, SEL stands for social emotional learning. And it is our school wide focus this year, um, recognizing how important it is for our students to be aware of their own social and emotional well being and be aware of um, how to care for that social emotional well being. We all know that 2020 has been quite the year and quite the crazy year at that. And so we are making uh, great efforts in the building to try and help our students in that area. And we're hoping that you can join us with those efforts at home as well. So today we have kind of two portions of our, of our presentation. Our first section is going to be about uh, SEL activities that we are doing in school. And that presentation is going to be led by uh, Miss Lisa Columbus, Miss Nicole Machete, and Miss Christine Murphy. Uh, Murphy, oh my goodness, Fortino, sorry. <laughs> and they are going to talk a little bit about uh, things that were going on in school. And then the second half is going to be led by um, Miss Tamar Richmond and Miss Wendy Hurwitz. They're going to come in and talk about um, suggestions of what you can do at home to help support uh, your students. So I'm going to turn it over to our first presenters. And if you have questions, if you wanna just save them till the end or you can put them in the chat and then we can try and address questions um, throughout, throughout the presentation today. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna start. I'm Mrs. Fortino. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That was my maiden name. So it's not that weird that she said that. Uh, although it was 13 years ago, but that's okay. <laughs> so we're going to talk about um, how we use SEL in the classroom. I'm going to share my screen with you so we can show you a few things. <clears throat> Okay, um, so as teachers, especially in the middle school, we all have our content area that we focus on, um, but we all are in agreement that we really need to educate the whole child, not just on whatever academic piece that we're working on. So um, we need to make sure that they develop a good sense of that social emotional relationships with themselves and with others. Um, so we're going to do a few different things with you, but today we're going to start by playing a quick little game and Miss Columbus is going to lead it for us. Okay. Hi, I'm Lisa Columbus. Um, we're going to just give you an example of what we do sometimes when we start off with the kids. We'll give them a quick SEL do now, something to get them engaged, maybe something to get them to turn their cameras on or get a conversation going. So we're going to um, just do two quick questions of which would you rather. So the first question. Would you rather, and then you're gonna use your hands to tell us, or if you don't wanna turn your camera on, you can type in the chat. Would you rather go ahead in time one year from now or go back in time one year? So if you'd rather go ahead, you can put a palm, open hand, or you can put a fist if you'd rather go back in time, or if you're not comfortable turning your camera on, you can go ahead and type it in the chat. So it looks like it's about 50-50. So this would be the time that we would say to the kids, well, why? Why did you pick what you chose? And then hopefully they would offer us some answers. You can put them in the chat. If you have a reason why you want to go back in time before the virus craziness, or if you want to go ahead in time, because hopefully it'll be over by then. Um, and then you can just kind of type it in the chat if you want to offer a reasoning as to why you chose what you chose. Um, but it's a good conversation starter. The kids get into these type of questions and then we kind of get some insight as to what they're feeling, what they're thinking, um, and it leads our conversation in different directions. So let's try ahead to move on in life was in the chat. All right, so next one. And when we were creating this, uh, Ms. Fortino, Ms. Machete and I actually had difficulty over this question. So we thought it was interesting. 
Would you rather your child be the reason his or her team always loses or your child be the reason his or her team always wins because he or she cheats? So again, if you think you'd rather them be the reason they always lose, open hands. If you want them to be the reason they win, but they cheat, close fist. Or you can type it in the chat. I see mostly open hands, the reason their child loses. And again, we could talk about why, right? I think most of us don't want our kids to be cheaters, but also at the same time, it's hard to see your child being the reason that their team always loses. So we could kind of discuss that. Um, too, if we were doing this in a classroom, why you chose what you chose. So this is just one example of how um, some of us start our day with a type of do now like this, just to get the kids engaged and having a conversation about something that's not necessarily academic. So um, like we said, a lot of obviously school is a huge part of that is the academic piece of it. Um, but we thought it was kind of interesting that if you look up the skills that employers are looking for um, in their employees, the top five that we found this list for, most of them have nothing to do with knowledge whatsoever. And it was just very interesting to look at it and say, okay, well, the first one was the ability to verbally communicate with persons inside and outside the organization. Can they communicate with each other well? Can they work in a team structure? Can they make decisions and solve problems? Can they plan, organize, and prioritize work? So all of these things they're looking at, and it really isn't, do they have knowledge about what it is that the job requires? Um, so... What we do at school is obviously, you know, we have a little while before your children are going to be out in the workforce, but our job is to prepare them for that. And one of the main things that we do to try to prepare them for these pieces is group work. And we've done group work in the past in school, but group work looks a little bit different now that we're virtual. Um, but we want to be able to give them the chance to learn how to communicate effectively. Um, so in the classroom, we have something called, in our virtual classroom, we have something called a breakout room. And the breakout room allows the students to go off into little groups where they can discuss freely a certain um, topic, or maybe they're working on a project, or maybe it's just a question. Um, but to help them along, we generally try to assign them roles or jobs within those breakout rooms. It helps them identify that there's these roles that we kind of naturally take on in a group work, um, but it kind of forces them to do it at that point. Um, and to hopefully freely share their ideas too when they're working in a smaller group. Um, the, what to say? Um, the, the communication skills become the most important thing. And generally when you're in a nice big class and especially on these, these, these computers like this, it's hard for students to be so willing to just come on and start talking about something in front of the whole class. So we've definitely found that these smaller groups give them that confidence to talk about what they want to say and, and input and their input and whatnot um, to do that. We also have the option as teachers to pop into the breakout rooms so we can jump in at any time, see where they're at. We can guide them through their conversation a little bit more. Um, and generally too, we have some sort of digital document or digital form that the students are required to fill out to really show how they were communicating, how they, they split up the work, how they all um, participated within with whatever their project was or whatever just maybe the question was that they were working on. Um, Ms. Machete, I'm jumping to you next. Hi, I'm Mrs. Machete. I teach sixth grade math. Uh, and my focus today is to talk to you about the power of how are you? Um, so again, we've talked about how much of a change this has been for the students and for us and for you as parents. Um, and something we found that was important still was the power of checking in on them, not necessarily about their academics, just how are they doing in general. So um, we took a bunch of pictures. These are just some of the different check-in forms you might have seen your child do or they may have talked to you about. Um, so some focus on the morning or the afternoon. 
Uh, I like to do on check-in before you check out. So I just ask, how are you? And is there anything you want to share with me? Um, and it gives them that chance to, you know, tell you something they might not have had the chance to tell you before. Um, there's an end of day check-in. There is their battery level. You know, some days they're up and ready to go. And just like us, some days we're like that and we're on the ball. And some days, you know, we're tired or certain things happen. So um, mind, mindful morning check-in about focusing on their breathing, focusing on the positive. So um, teachers do these in a variety of ways, but uh, we find it really beneficial because, you know, with some of the check-ins that we've done, we found out things we normally wouldn't have found out. We make meaningful, deeper connections with our students. Um, and I think they get to enjoy, you know, some say, I have nothing to tell you, but the ones who want to talk, that's their opportunity. And even if they're a quiet kid in class, they're normally the kids who write the most on these forms, I find, which is um, another reason we like to do them. Um, so yeah, those are our check-ins. Okay, um, this is another resource that we use in the classroom or a lot of teachers are comfortable using and um, Mrs. Sadler is going to, I guess, share the link with you to this presentation. So I'll link the website on here if you want to access it. Um, it's something called Go Noodle and it's free. Um, and they have all different categories. They have some academic stuff, but it's a little bit elementary. But the SEL part has different categories. So if a teacher is looking for an activity to get them to focus a little bit better or to manage some stress or practice self-control, um, they have breathing exercises on here. They have stretching exercises, guided dance. They even have um, little how-to videos of making things. So like I know I saw a video the other day of how to make a stress ball. And so they can do these in the classroom, but they can also do them at home. Um, I have two children that are home with me and when we have breaks, I always make them do a go noodle um, with me in the living room and it just gets them up and moving. Um, there's yoga on there. There's a lot of different activities and the kids really, you know, some of them are resistant at first, but they really get into it. And in being in remotes, they're able to turn their cameras off and feel safe because no one's watching them. So then they can kind of do it behind the scenes and be engaged that way. And it just teaches them how to be present in the moment, just shut everything else out for a few minutes and focus to be mindful. Go ahead, Ms. Portino. So um, we just wanted to include in here the list of Woodrow Wilson Middle School's co-curricular. So this year, the students had a virtual club fair in the beginning of October. And um, as you can imagine, we had to get uh, creative this year since all clubs are virtual, but so many wonderful teachers have stepped up at Woodrow to um, either continue clubs they've done in the past or try out some new clubs um, to just give those kids another outlet uh, to do something fun, to do something that, um, you know, fulfills their interests outside of a typical classroom and a typical school day. So we just listed it here. Um, some clubs might still be open to join. If your child hasn't joined anything, they'd have to check with a specific um, advisor. You know, certain clubs, you know, compete in competitions, so those might be closed off. Um, but here's the list we just wanted to give you in case you never um, got a chance to look at it. Uh, but it is something that the kids look forward to um, and they can, like I said, reach out to the advisor, see if a club is still open, if they'd want to join, and they can figure out what day it's on. But we do want to focus um, on three specific clubs that were started brand new this year at Woodrow Wilson that focus um, pretty much solely on SEL. So this is the Selfie Club. It is um, available for seventh and eighth grade students. And um, Mrs. Columbus and Mrs. Fortino are actually the advisors for this club. Um, so it's uh, selfie stands for social emotional learning for everyone club. Um, so in this club, they play games and fun activities. Um, I know that the kids love going to it. So this one is specific for seventh and eighth. So if you have a seventh or eighth grade child who might be interested in joining a club where they can focus on stuff to reduce their stress and relax. I don't know if you guys wanted to add anything in for your club before I go on. You guys are good. Okay, so we can go, so that's Selfie Club. Oh, and that's on Thursdays, right? I forgot. 
that's on Thursdays. Um, this is a club I started this year. Um, so me and Miss Judgets are the advisors for Wine Down Wednesdays. So those are on Wednesdays. Um, this club is open to all sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. Um, we're still accepting members. So we do different activities, again, all focusing on SEL, stuff that they enjoy, how do they wind down. So we kind of took their interest, did some activities based on that. A popular thing has been baking sessions. I started that last year with um, my regular students uh, when we had um, Win Wednesdays and they loved it. So we've now made the first Wednesday of each month baking. Um, and, but actually this week we, this month we couldn't do it the first week. So we did it yesterday. We baked peppermint bark or s'mores bark. Um, the kids get to choose. Some kids made cheesecake bars. The stuff they come up with is, is so fun. Um, but it's interesting too. It's a nice outlet. We never would have imagined doing something like this, you know, before everything happened last year. So it's cool to get to see them do different things. We do gim kits, um, cahoots, all different things. And the last club that focuses on SEL is the Challenger Chill Club. I know uh, Mr. Garino and Ms. Cameron are the advisors for this club. They meet on Mondays. So if your child wants to join all three SEL <laughs> clubs, there's that one offered pretty much every day of the week. Um, and they do similar things. I know they focus on a breathing activity, um, how to de-stress, uh, and then they do a fun-filled activity after that. So lots of variety. Um, and again, for sure, these clubs are all still open. So if it's something you think your child may be interested in, then you can have them sign up. That's it. Thanks, Ms. Fortino. So um, kind of in conclusion with this, we feel as a group of teachers, we do a lot for our students when it comes to SEL, but we're still always looking for new ideas, ways to engage our students. We tend to work together by either grade level or department or just people we're friendly with to try to share new ideas. We talk about our successes, maybe things that didn't work so great so we can learn from each other. And it actually kind of gives us a little bit of an SEL, you know, not just for the kids, but for us as well to, um, to really get that chance to work together and to hopefully help the students as much as we can. Um, so that's, that's what we have to say about the SEL in the classroom. Thank you so much, Ms. Columbus, Ms. Fortino, Ms. Machete. We are going to have a general question and answer time at the end of the presentations, but if anybody has anything specific um, about SEL in school, we can try and answer those now or we can hold off to the end. I just, uh, I just want to say you guys are awesome for putting something like this together and thinking about the kids' mental health, which is, um, which is very important. So thank you, first and foremost. Thank you. Okay, so if you have more questions that come to mind, uh, feel free uh, to put them in the chat or to hold on to them till the end. And I'm gonna turn the presentation over to Ms. Richmond, who's gonna talk a little bit about uh, reading strategies and bibliotherapy. Good morning, everybody. Um, I am so thrilled to be here to talk about something that I am so passionate about. Um, I could talk for a very long time about this, but I will not. But I do want to just start off by saying that if you have questions about anything that I'm saying, if you have a specific issue with your child, um, I am the librarian here at Woodrow for all 1300 kids, so all grades. So please, please do reach out to me. Um, I will put my email address in at the end. So, but I will keep this brief, I promise this morning. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So we are all stuck. <laughs> um, from in one way or another. Um, it, we can't go the places we want. I've had so many kids talk to me about how crushed they were when their trips were canceled um, in the spring or this summer, and that's really, really hard. Um, but the good news is, as this lovely cartoon and quote says, um, reading gives us some place to go when we have to stay where we are. Um, that is the beautiful thing about reading. Um, it lets us go, whether it's in space or, lot, or just to another country or a, to a child who's in very different circumstances than we are. So one of our, certainly my main coping strategies during this pandemic has been reading. Um, and it is so important for your kids. And let's talk a little specifically 
um, about how it relates to SEL. So I really do feel strongly that reading is the gateway to SEL. Um, our children are going through all kinds of emotions right now. Um, loneliness, sadness, um, confusion, worry, um, and you know the usual uh, emotions of being a, a tween and a teen, of course. Um, they're really not getting a lot of the experiences where they'd be able to go to school and talk to others about that. When they read books about kids going through similar situations, again, could be in space, it could be in just in another school, they know they are not alone. Um, when your child is experiencing anxiety, maybe their stomach hurts all the time. Guts is a fantastic graphic novel where about a girl just like that. Um, if your child's worried about how they look, they feel they're too fat, they're too thin, they're worried about their attractiveness, if we're, this is a scary age for that. Um, Ugly is an amazing science fiction series about the nature of beauty for teens. Maybe your child's really shy. They never want to turn on their camera. They don't want to talk in class. Your te the teacher's calling you saying they don't participate. How about reading about Stand Up Yumi Chung, which is about a girl who's so shy she can barely even speak. Um, all of these books help our kids know they are not alone and experience other people's lives in, in different circumstances and the same. So I, I can't tell you how strongly I feel about reading. Um, as being so essential to our kids' social and emotional health and learning. Sorry about that, our bells are still going on at school. Uh, so how can you help? Well, um, when they were little, it was really easy. Uh, we could read bedtime stories, we could curl up with them. There were lots of fun picture books to read. We were all pretty good at this. Um, I was great. Uh, but you know what? It gets so much harder as they get older. Um, maybe they're in their room all the time. You don't have time. They don't have time. So how else can we help? Well, one of the hardest things to do for us, because we are all so busy with work and taking care of ourselves and taking care of others, is modeling. Um, your kids really do care um, what you do. Sometimes it doesn't seem like it, but they really do. The, they are modeling your, their behavior on what you do. So it doesn't have to be a huge time commitment, but showing that you wind down in the evenings by reading for 10 minutes, um, that that's what you do before you go to bed. Showing them that you value this, this is important to you, and most of all that you enjoy this um, is really going to help them become great readers. It's hard, I know, we're all on our iPads, we're all checking Twitter and everything else, but 10 minutes, 10 minutes is, is, is really does a world of good. Also, <laughs> this is a tough one. We all want our kids to read good books. Um, we want them to read classics. We want them to read award winners. We want them to read books that were important to us when we were children. Um, but, and I'll tell you, this is, this is 20 years of really painful experience as a mom and um, a librarian and a teacher. Nothing turns a kid off reading faster than being told to read a good book. Um, they're, they're great kids, and so they'll probably read it for you. But will they pick up the next and the next and the next? Um, growing reading skills is all about choice, letting them read what they want to read, even if it seems very foreign to us. Um, letting my, my son read uh, video game books based on video games was really tough for me, but that's what turned him on to reading. That's what he really enjoyed. So give them all the choice they want. If that means they're reading nothing but, gra but graphic novels, that's just fine. Um, or just reading science fiction, please don't get caught up in what is good or acceptable. Um, they, they need lots and lots of choice. So um, those are come a couple strategies for home. Another way you can help um, is something that I've developed over the, the course of the pandemic, and that is um, our school library website. Um, we call it the, the Library 2.0. And if um, I actually go to that website, Can you still see that website, guys? Because I, I don't, yeah, good, okay. So there's a ton of stuff on this website and I really could talk for a very long time about it. But very briefly, in the pandemic, how do you guys get good books? Because, you know, we don't all have endless budgets to buy from Amazon. That's, that's not where we're at. Um, so we're offering a bunch of strategies to help. One of the things that we're offering is contactless checkout or curbside pickout pick up sorry um, and there's a whole little video here that you can watch to see how it works here's a picture of the cart that's outside um, your child just places holds on books just like they would at the Edison Public Library and then they have four days to pick it up and if you really can't get here we can get it to your home um, but 
no need to come inside. Uh, the, the books are kept in quarantine for three days. Um, it is a very safe way to do it. But we have a great library here, and this is a wonderful way to get books in their hands. Another way we can do it is we work very hard on ebooks. Um, here, um, we use the Edison Township Public Library as part of our community um, to get free ebooks right on their Chromebooks or Kindles. Um, there's eLibrary NJ, there is also Hoopla, those are our two main parts. Uh, you do need a, a library card, and if you're, sorry not comfortable going to the library right now, the nice thing is that you can get, they, your child can get one right here in a day. Um, you can do it all online. In a day, they'll get an email with their information. We have tutorials to use these sites. I've also visited many, many English classes to talk through this, but here they can just get eBooks right on their um, computers or tablets or phones or whatever devices they have. As you can see, um, there's also tons of other, other resources on this website. And for uh, what uh, other teachers are talking about, I also want you to, to urge you to spend some time with your child looking at this website together. Again, it does not have to be a long time, you know, five, 10 minutes. We have tons of um, making sites where you guys could make something together, whether it be coding, whether it be art. We also have games you can play together. Um, music, you can make music together or check out our, our school playlist and say, oh yeah, I love that song. That really means a lot to me. You can see this was created by students and teachers and they talk about what these songs mean to them. But we also have software to make your own music. Taking care of you. Um, so there is a lot here and it's a great way just to sit down for five minutes and say, oh yeah, what do you like on this site? Oh, that's so cool. Um, and spend that quality time together. Our kids are having a rough time. We are all having a rough time. So anything and everything that we can do to help is, is means a lot. Um, again, as I said at the beginning, um, I am completely here uh, for help, whether it's finding a great book or if you're looking for something else, I can try and put you and connect, connect you with the right person. Um, I am honored to work with your kids. We have an amazing, amazing school here and uh, I, I, I appreciate it each and every day. So please contact me, feel free. Um, I'm always happy to, to talk either email or by phone. And um, thank you so much for coming today. We really do appreciate it. And I'm going to stop sharing. Thank you so much, 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 ugh, so much, Ms. Richman. We, um, I am going to link all of the presentations from today onto uh, the agenda that was sent out to you via the flyer uh, earlier this week. So you will have access to all of the resources and Ms. Richmond's website can, uh, the Woodrow Wilson Library 2.0 can also be accessed directly from the Woodrow Wilson website uh, if you're looking for it. So uh, again, I'm gonna kind of pause for a minute if anybody has questions or comments that we you would like to direct directly towards Ms. Richmond. Thank you so much for sharing and uh, I'll definitely get in touch with you for recommendations on books for both my daughters. Great, I'll look forward to it. I'll make sure my email address is on the presentation, which it's not right now, but I will fix now. <laughs> okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Mrs. Manrada. I'm the assistant principal. Um, and I'm just going to um, you know, jump in and say that if you cannot come to school to pick up the books, Ms. Richmond has this arrangement with the kids where they can request a book and we can deliver the book to your house. Our security guard does that twice a week. So if, you know, if this is an issue to come to school, our kids can still choose the books and we can um, make sure they get to you. Um, I have a question regarding the books. How long does, um, it, how long is it that they can pick up the books? Like until three o'clock or five o'clock so that, you know, parents have an idea of how long. I know I've seen some rushing over to get their books and I'm just curious to know how long the time frame they have to pick it up. Sure. Um, the cart um, is outside generally um, between 7.30 and 4 p.m. Um, for four days. But what, I, what I'm trying to tell the kids all the time is um, if that's a problem, because, hey, look, I work all day. I get it. Um, you know, it's not always possible to get there between those hours or whatever. Contact me. We can either have it delivered to your home, as Ms. Mendorado was just referring to, or we can work something out. Uh, so, we can actually make exceptions. It's a general rule between 7.30 and 4 because that's when our, our maintenance staff is able to, to get it in and out. Uh, 
Um, one other question. I'm not sure if I missed it, but how do we order the books online? Sure. So um, I didn't want to spend too much of our time going through the nuts and bolts, but on the, the first page of the website, the, the home page right there, um, there is a video that it's a brief video, five minutes. It walks you right through it. Um, and if you know you want to arrange a meeting with me or with you and your kids or you know you have questions just feel free to, to contact me directly if anything's unclear and just to, to answer the question um, that I just saw in the chat yes all the delivery is free the wonderful thing about libraries it's all free okay, thank you Okay, so thank you, Mr. Richmond. If, again, if anybody has questions, we will have time for more questions at the end. And at this point, I'm gonna turn the presentation over to um, Ms. Hurwitz, who is going to share a little bit about some strategies that you can do at home. So Ms. Hurwitz, if you can like to unmute and you can yep. share your screen. I just did, thank you. And yeah, I just forgot to have Ms. Caprigli on screen share. So yeah, <laughs> I think I solved that, hopefully. All right, so, um, Thank you everyone for coming today. And this is a really nice opportunity. Thank you to Mrs. Seller for coordinating. So what I wanted to share with you is some strategies to balance stress, because clearly this is the most stressful experience, I, it, like ongoing stress than I think we've all ever experienced, um, but with some fun and gratitude. So dealing with life in a pandemic. And I'm just gonna share some things that have worked for my family and me. I have. Well, I was gonna say two teenagers, but now my older one is 20. So I have a 16 and a 20 year old. So I'll share with you some things that worked for me and for us. And hopefully you can have, get a couple of takeaway ideas from here. Um, the slides will be available to you. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna read every word and I'll try not to rush through, but um, I know there's a lot on the agenda for today. So first, number one, I think is really just admitting this is hard because sometimes that helps our kids cope a little bit better. Like if we're always trying to put a smiley face on and saying, oh yeah, this is hard, but you get to do this and you get to do that and think of all the positives. This is really hard. I mean, maybe some of you have experienced illness or loss of close ones, close relatives or friends, um, job loss, um, financial struggles. This is hard. And I think that's the number one thing is acknowledging that this is not easy and it's okay to let your kids know when you're having a hard time because sometimes that encourages them to rise to the occasion and be more sensitive and step outside that very like self-focused teen world that which is very common for teenagers but i think the one benefit of this is that it helped people look outside their you know daily routine daily lives and daily struggles to see that other people have it hard as well so i think that's that that's my first thing that i would suggest Second, I would think about what you can do to try some family fun bonding. And you have to decide what works for you and your family. Um, board games. So you might have old favorites that you played when you were younger and there's so many new ones out. So I put two links here to two articles um, from this fall. One was in the summer, I believe. One was in the fall in the New York Times that listed a whole bunch of new games. Um, and I thought I found some great ideas in there that I'm using as holiday gifts for my family. Family movie night, of course, is fun. I know this month they're streaming all sorts of Christmas movies for free on different stations. Um, you can binge watch favorite shows and whether you celebrate Christmas or not, you can always find, like I personally don't, but I always enjoy watching some of the old classics with my kids. Uh, try playing some of your kids' video games or apps because they'll really enjoy teaching you the strategies and watching you not be very good at it. So Among Us, of course, you probably know is one of the most popular apps and games out right now. And I love playing it with my kids. And it's kind of a joke at how like when I'm so excited, like, yay, I finished a task, which is not really the whole point of the game. That's a sub plot versus trying to find out who the imposter is, but try to learn what they're interested in because you have a little extra time on your hands, especially the next month or two as we're going to kind of have to hunker down um, as the numbers rise. Um, if you're interested in art, there are so many things that you can do, drawing, painting, clay, find taking going through your recycling bin and look up makerspace ideas and miss richmond has so many on her website um i know she spoke about reading we do sometimes just reading nights we'll sit on the couch and read together or snuggle in bed and read so just taking some downtime for ourselves we personally love singing um you can learn your kids favorite songs you can teach them some of yours uh you can try doing a tic tac dance with them you don't have to be good that's half the fun is the humility aspect and just laughing and trying to blow off some steam and tension because it's not an easy time 
mean, especially when they're limited as to how many friends they can see, especially as the weather gets colder. Um, cooking and baking is great, sharing family traditions. There are lots of online cooking classes now, many that are free, many that are for a donation, fundraising for different organizations. You can connect with relatives this way via FaceTime or Zoom. Um, you can make your own little cooking show and have different family members or friends come up with, you know, entries for it. And then when it's nice out, getting outside in nature. Um, I, I'm trying to read what the top epidemiologists are doing. So we're going to celebrate my mom's birthday this weekend outside because outside with masks, socially distance apart is safe. So nature walks, um, when it gets snowy, building a snowman or a fort, throwing leaves if there's still any out around outside your house. Um, anything that gets you out in the sunshine breaks up the monotony of being inside for yet another day. One thing that I want to recommend is expressing gratitude. I linked a study from Harvard Medical School that shows the um, benefits, not only mental, but physical benefits of expressing gratitude. So you can do this at a meal, go around the table, have everyone share something either that they appreciate about another family member or someone else in their life or something that they're thankful for that happened that week. You can write little notes of thanks, hide them around the house. They can write notes to friends, to teachers, to family members and mail them. Um, we just did some um, Hanukkah card making on Sunday, my daughter and I through a workshop and we mailed them all out. And the calls we started getting yesterday and today from people were, they were just so happy to receive a card from us. And some were family members and some were just congregants that I know from my synagogue, but I haven't seen in a while because, you know, we've all been not in public together and elderly people and they were so appreciative. Exercise, movement, and yoga, one of my personal hobbies. So I link some slides here that teach you the benefits of exercise and combating stress and boosting moods. It's one of the number one cures without medication for combating depression, anxiety, and stress. So find activities that you and your family enjoy doing together that are safe during a pandemic. So yoga, you can do at home. There's numerous videos online for free. Um, or you can pay for some if you find someone you really like. Go for a run when it's not freezing, unless you like running in the cold, some people do. Uh, so basketball, dance parties, badminton, anything that you and your children enjoy. Um, and let your kids take the lead, but you can also teach them something that maybe you are good at and that you played. But most importantly, I would suggest having fun. And lastly, this is something I wanna give you from a personal perspective. School is important, grades are important, but mental health is just as important. And I know that there's often a stigma against admitting mental health problems, and this can be even more harmful. Stress is part of life, but anxiety and depression are increasing exponentially now, especially with teens. I have family members who are therapists. Their practices are overflowing with new patients. Um, listen to your child. Sometimes they just need someone to talk to, but get professional help when needed. And you don't even have to leave the house now. Everyone's doing telehealth appointments. Um, and like I said, there's a reason why most therapists are seeing an increase now. There are um, many free strategies online and self-help books, but sometimes a professional can help when you don't know what to do. And let your child know that you're there for him or her and will not judge. So I have a daughter who struggles with anxiety and she has been seeing a therapist on and off for years. And she's very open about it and comfortable talking about it with her friends. And one of her friends, a good friend texted her and said, you know, can you help this other person who they're sort of friends with, who is dealing with a lot of anxiety right now, but said that her parents are not very accepting. And my daughter goes to JP Stevens. So this is people in our community. And so my daughter set aside some time to do a little FaceTime, you know, counseling session with her and shared strategies of what she does when she's experiencing stress. And now other friends are reaching out to her. And it's wonderful that she can be that resource to help her friends. And it also helps her as well. Um, but I think it's really important that you recognize um, that this is, these are real concerns that kids have today. And then lastly, I just wanted to share some silly pictures. Um, you may have seen the top one last year. We, one of the nights early on in the pandemic when we were stuck home, I said, let's just put all on our onesies. And my um, older daughter got us all onesies for various holiday gifts and birthdays last year. So we took a whole bunch of pictures with it. We did chalk art. We did in the summer, this great um, acrylic paint marble art, which was really fun pouring it, making a mess. Um, my kids have been baking. Sometimes there's flour and icing on every surface. I don't even know how it gets there, but I let 
let them take the lead, lead and do what they want to make. And then this is something I always did as a kid. We love taking those little helicopter things and sticking them on our nose. So this was just a day of being fun. So I think any time that you can incorporate silliness um, will help and just alleviate some stress. So I'm sorry if I went through that at lightning speed. My kids are reviewing for a test, but um, I think Mrs. Sedler can make the link available to you. And I saw some things popping up in the chat, so I'm happy to address any um, questions. But um, thank you so much, Ms. Yeah. Horwitz. I think that was a really excellent presentation, letting us see a little insight of how we can, you know, try and address some of these things at home. So again, I'm going to open it up for questions. Questions can be specific for Ms. Horwitz's presentation or SEL in general. Feel free to put them in the chat or you can unmute yourself. I just want to say, um, before we go into the questions, um, by, my, by the way, my name is Natalie, I'm the PPA president. I just want to thank everybody for joining um, this chat. This chat. Thank you, Mrs. Ms. Sedler, for putting this together, all the teachers. I really appreciate it. This has been an excellent presentation. I hope all the parents enjoy this presentation, and I hope um, you continue joining us for our next one. I want to thank you so much again, everybody, for putting this together. I really it's beneficial and um, useful for our family. So I hope everyone appreciates this as well. So before we go into any questions, I just want to thank everybody for that. And same here, you know, I also want to um, thank you, Ms. Sedler. She's our PTA Coffee Chat Liaison. And uh, thank you for putting this event together. And a big, big thank you to all our teachers, Ms. Machari, Ms. Fortino, Ms. Columbus, Ms. Richman, Ms. Hurwitz, Ms. Capriglione for putting this presentation together. I think this is such unusual times. Everybody is assuming roles that we never imagined we would. So all these strategies of spending some time with the family or spending time with your own kids can really help. Um, I loved your presentation to Ms. Harvitz. The strategies were great and I'll just share my own personal story. So my daughter does get up early in the morning before I get to school. She's my workout buddy. So we work out and then I get to school. And most of the times when I uh, open my lunch, somewhere in my lunch, I always find a note from her saying, have a great day or thank you for this. And it just makes my day. I know it's like a small thing we can do to you know, make someone's day, but it really definitely makes my day when, when I open the lunch and it's always hidden at a different spot. So kind of I'm looking for it. Where is it? Uh, so, you know, I think that's a great strategy. Anything we can do to um, make someone's day brighter is, is excellent. Um, I'd love to add on to that. When my older daughter started sleepaway camp many years ago, I hid little notes in every place when she would be unpacking. And that's a tradition that we follow to this day. And in September, she moved into an off-campus apartment and I hid things, but I hid a lot of things in her winter stuff. So when it started getting cold, which in Michigan is pretty early, she's like, I just found one of the funny things you hid in my boots or in my winter coat or in this sweater. And, and she said, how many more are there? I said, honestly, I have no idea because that was August and it's October and I can't remember anything from <laughs> yesterday, before yesterday. But those little things make a difference. So um, it's become a nice little tradition. And I think the tables turn after a while. I remember doing that for my daughter when she was little, and now I'm getting the notes. Yes, so, hey. I love that. Nice. <laughs> All right, if you don't mind, I'm going to get back to my class just because they're reviewing for a test. Um, sure, thank you so much, Ms. Horwitz. Sure, thank you so much. And it, feel free to you know, share my email if anyone has personal questions and wants to talk. Um, I'm happy to be there. Okay? Thank you. And thank stay you. well, everybody. I just want to say thank you to everybody. You guys are awesome, and you're doing an amazing job, by the way. Hard work especially during this time, our kids need this the most. Grades are important, but their mental health is much more important and their happiness is more important than anything else. So please, to the, all the parents, I would say, you know what, just make sure your kids are happy, talk to them, you know, get, get, get to know a little bit more about what they're going through too. So every day is a mental check for our kids. So thank you guys so much for putting this together. This is awesome, by the way. Thank you. I see someone asked um, in the chat about um, an anxiety therapist for kids. Um, I don't know somebody specifically. Uh, I see that Ms. Mandarada has suggested that you can email her. I'm also going to put in the chat um, Siobhan McDermott. She, if you joined us for our first presentation, she's our Rutgers past clinician who works with our students here. Um, she is also a really great resource. If she can't help you, she might be able to um, lead you on to somebody who, who could be beneficial for your family. 
Right. Thank you, Ms. Um, Sadler. You know, Ms. McDermott works with Woodrow Wilson. She's a certified uh, mental health clinician. She can definitely connect you with someone or, you know, even she can meet with your child if you want. Um, so definitely you could email her, email me, and we'll connect you with someone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank everyone. You. It's a very informative session. I'm also going to put in the chat right now for you, I'm going to put um, the copy of the agenda that was shared with you earlier. Um, this way, you have access to all of the teachers' presentations. Um, so their uh, presentations are linked on there. And also, I'm just going, I'm going to share my screen really quick. If you notice at the bottom, oh, it doesn't want to. It doesn't want to share my screen right now. Um, at the body, bottom of this agenda that I just shared with you, there's a link to a Google form. Um, so at this point for our first two coffee chats, um, as, a, as a building, we've kind of decided on the topics and we've led the conversation. What we'd like to hear from parents now is um, suggestions of topics of what will be helpful for you. Um, so we've come up with a few suggestions. We've talked to our um, SEL leadership team in the building. We've talked to guidance. I've talked to... Um, Ms. McDermott, our, past, our records past clinician, um, with some suggestions of think, topics that we think could be of interest, um, but we're looking to hear from the parents and we're gonna send this out in an email as well um, to the whole school community about what topics you're interested in in hearing more about. So that can guide us with our future presentations. I know our next one, I believe is scheduled for January 21st. So if you click that agenda, the Google form is linked at the bottom to give us a little bit more insight. So I know we're all very busy and, and I really, really appreciate everyone taking the time out of their day to join us. If there's no other questions, I'm, I'm gonna end the Zoom, but please feel free to reach out to any of the presenters today or to Ms. Menderada or Mr. Uh, Zacchino or myself, and we would be happy to um, help you with any questions you may have. And again, I really can't thank you all enough for coming and helping um, to support this initiative. It's really important that SEL isn't happening only at school, but at home as well. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your day and happy holidays for everybody. And we hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you.